Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about XGH NARC, uh, a framework for efficient verifiable computation. Uh, this is joint work with uh, my advisors, uh, Babiz and Elaine. So we have the same setting of verifiable computation in this talk where an untrusted, uh, where a client outsources a computation to some untrusted party. And uh, this untrusted party is supposed to uh, evaluate uh, or run the computation along with some secret input, return the result back along with the proof to uh, the verifier. And thankfully during the past decade there have been orders of magnitude and different on all aspects of performance. And um, we have now efficient constructions and implementations for what's called uh, ZK SNART which also, uh, like, which enables us to get very short proofs and minimal verification times under certain assumptions. And this enabled a lot of practical applications spanning different areas, including um, cryptocurrency, um, certificate verification, and uh, graph algorithms, and also image authentication. And in this talk, we're going to focus on one part of this, is the QAB-based uh, pre-processing ZK SNARKs, which is the one that was used for many of the practical applications. Basically how, like, uh, basically we're going to focus on, in, on its front end. Basically how we can use such construction. So typically um, the computation to be verified is being expressed in a high level program and then it gets compiled to some kind of an arithmetic circuit or a set of quadratic constraints over a finite field. And this step has to be done carefully because the, the, the prover's time depends and in a quasi-linear manner on the number of constraints or multiplication gates in the circuit. And what makes this problem uh, interesting is that this has a different cost model than um, what we are used to in typical programs. So for example, bitwise operations are very expensive. And uh, in comparison, uh, like multiplication of circuit uh, unknowns is much more expensive compared to multiplication by constants, for example. And uh, currently there are two ways where we can uh, express computations as circuits. One way is uh, high level compilers, which can be categorized into classes. One class is the uh, program specific compilers. Um, um, in, in this program specific compilers, the, uh, like there's a different circuit generated by every program. And there have been a lot of interesting works in this area, like every compiler was providing different uh, optimizations. There's also the concept of the universal circuit generators, which is, provides very interesting properties in terms of the uh, expressiveness and uh, the capabilities of runtime code generation, but it has uh, less efficiency compared to the program specific uh, compilers. The other one is the low level libraries or the manual libraries, which the programmer has to construct the gadgets manually and write the constraints manually. And these low, low level libraries are preferred in when we write uh, performance critical applications. And basically to choose between uh, both of these kinds is basically trade off between the programmer's effort and performance. For many of the performance critical applications, the low level libraries were actually used. Okay, so the goals of XJSNARC is that can we minimize the programmer's effort and in the same time get, get more efficient circuits. Basically in the design space we would like to be um, uh, in this shape. We would like to improve the circuit size and at the same time make the programming high level or easier for the programmer so that we can make writing applications faster and more easier. And also can we develop more efficient circuits for uh, frequent operations? Mainly we would like to focus on cryptographic applications because all the applications, almost all the applications that are shown in the first slide have a cryptographic component in the circuit because what makes uh, ZK SNARKs attractive for many applications I believe is the zero knowledge aspect which means that there will be some zero knowledge uh, or some cryptographic gadgets in the circuit like verifying hashes or signatures or encryption. So we would like to focus specifically on making techniques or development for these applications easier. And also we are not limited to that. We're going to provide optimizations for random memory access applications as we're going to see. Um, here in the, in the figure I just, um, actually in, in our benchmarks we're going to show that our tool can get to the manual implementation or uh, for example, for SHA-256 and RSA, we're actually um, can achieve the, the, the efficiency of low level, but in general, we can't make a statement like this. Or like we can say that uh, the, it's, it's always uh, the manual level tool or like the low level tools are going always to be better. So a closer look our, at our motivation. So the previous high level compilers provide very useful features and optimizations. However, I believe that there are a um, few things uh, missing before uh, making these uh, used widely. So the first is that the size, of, the size of the circuit output is often larger than the manually developed circuits. 
Additionally, it requires extensive programming uh, background or like knowledge of how the underlying ZK Snarks um, uh, circuit works. So the programmer is still responsible for many decisions. For example, choosing which, uh, like what is the memory, uh, what is the efficient memory representation based on the memory workload. Also, the programmer is responsible for tracking bit width, avoiding overflows, and also added, adding casting statements in non-trivial locations. And uh, for some applications, as we're going to show next, uh, using high-level compilers this actually is going to require more effort and background as low-level tools. And this application that I'm going to show is actually appeared in two papers, like one of them uh, is, in, is totally independent. So these applications are not just uh, side cases. So let's see, like let's say we would like to do some finite field operations in, in non-native in non field, in a field that is different from uh, the field that where the ZK snark circuit uh, operates. So let's say we have two elliptic curve points over a different field, and we would like to apply the addition formula of, uh, in, in, uh, in affine coordinates, assuming all the error checks have been, um, have been made. So in order to do this currently using high-level compilers or manual-level tools, the programmer will have to do the following. Since this field is large, the programmer will have to divide every element into multiple chunks. It's choosing the bit width of every chunk here is, like as we show in the paper, is non-trivial. Like it, it matters in the efficiency and uh, of course the security. And uh, the programmer will have to implement subtraction manually. This typically involves adding some auxiliary constants, it's choosing very, it's chosen very carefully. And then there will be a division operation done manually as well. This requires knowledge of non-determinism in order to, to write this securely. And also there will be uh, multiplication later, which is going to increase the bit width of these, uh, of these elements. And the programmer will be responsible for, for choosing when to reduce or like to do mod operations to reduce uh, the length of these elements. So as we see here, this is a very complicated circuit. There are many decisions by the programmer and the visibility is, the complexity is going to be visible in both low level and high level implementations. So uh, to give you like what XJSNARC tries to do is to introduce parameterized native types and automates all of these decisions while even having more efficient circuits than before. So basically in our code, like uh, to show the code that um, for adding the points, in, in our framework, the programmer would go, uh, like, is, is going to write code like this. It's, it's basically, it's like the uh, actual uh, equations. And I have to emphasize here that this is not hard coded for a certain field. Actually, the programmer can define whatever field uh, uh, he'd like the, the circuit to operate on. And then during the editing, during, uh, in, in the framework, the programmer can choose which field uh, he'd like the variables to be in. And uh, here, as you see, the programmer can define long fields, short fields, or even work on the native. And the back end adapts its implementation uh, according to the circuit structure and according to the fields that the programmer is working on. Okay, so the outline of XJSNARC, the programmer writes uh, the code in, um, in our XJSNARC extension, which is developed as a Java extension on top of the JetBrains MBS framework. And it gets type checked in, in, in the front end, and it gets transformed to a Java code that generates the circuit. And uh, then in the back end, before we do or generate any constraints, we do uh, uh, like initially a complete analysis phase of the circuit to study how every variables are being used, what are the parameters and so on. And then in the second phase, we generate the circuit. And then after we generate the circuit, we'll even apply uh, more optimizations. One part, like one key point here is that we implemented all the steps from the high level code to the circuit generation in order to be able to keep track of the programmer's intention and be able to, to make better decisions. Um, under the hood we have, um, so in, for the back end we implemented optimizations for both short and long integer operations. Also we have uh, a new optimization for read-only static memory which, which helps for um, uh, techniques like the, um, the S-Box which appears in the ES and also pre-computed -compu pre computations which could appear in floating point operations when we store or like, because it's expensive sometimes to do uh, many op like uh, operations in the circuit so we can pre-compute them and store them in read-only memories. And also we do automated identification of the efficient memory representation. And also we do, in order to reduce the number of multiplication gates or constraints even further, we apply multivariate polynomial minimization. We have implemented a version that, that's customized for the QEB based uh, ZK SNARKs. In terms of the front end, uh, it's currently, as I said, developed as a Java extension using the JetBrains MBS framework. It provides parameterized types for long integer and short integer and for field operations as well. It has the complexity of the backend implementation and enables better use of non-determinism 
which is basically how to set the values of external witnesses in the same environment. And we also have custom IDE support, so we give optimization hints interactively that are customized to the, to, to the SNARKs, and we have error checking for, for the new patch system. One limitation for this, though, is that it requires development to be done in this framework, which would require the users in the beginning to get familiar uh, with the environment. Okay, so I'm going to select just a couple of points of these for the sake of time to talk about. One point is the random memory access, like what we do to, to, to improve. So basically for the read-only static memory, which given an, an element of hard-coded values, an unknown index R during runtime return um, uh, the value at a specific index. Um, so basically, uh, the, the currently uh, available uh, ways to do it are either Merkov trees or to do a linear scan or uh, to use a permutation network. And uh, in the paper, we describe a new optimization that is specific to the cost model of the QEB-based uh, DKSNARCs. Mainly, it, it relies on the, um, uh, on the, the multiplication by constants are, um, are sheep, and also it relies on non-determinism. And it, it, it's based on dividing or partitioning this array into square root of n partitions, where we construct a linear system offline for every uh, partition, and then in the circuit, we just check a membership by checking whether the solution provided by, um, uh, by the prover uh, like belongs to one of these square root of n linear systems. In, in comparison with earlier work, um, uh, this scheme is, um, uh, as you see, it's, it's, um, it, it doesn't look from this table that it's more efficient. Actually, asymptotically speaking, the Merkov tree is more efficient. But as we're going to see when we speak concretely or evaluate or like get the actual value for constants, um, it's actually better than all of these schemes when the size of the memory is small and for any uh, memory access uh, or like for any number of accesses. So for example, it's better than in the very first part, it's, it's better than the nearest one, it's better than the linear scan, and later it's better than the optimized permutation network. And I have to say the, uh, the current compilers don't use the optimized permutation network, but we just include it here for a fairness of comparison. Also, we use what we call a smart memory structure. So basically, based on the workload of the program, we identify which, which memory um, algorithm to use to, like, to, like, to represent the memory accesses in. So basically, we have three possible memory algorithms, including the, uh, the linear scan, the routing networks, and our read-only memory technique. And we decide what's best based on uh, the program, uh, analyzing the program. And I have to say that we don't group all the memory accesses into just one memory. We have to study every memory separately. And this gives us uh, a more efficient representation for object-oriented programs. So XJSNARC provides the ability to write uh, the programmers to, to write different um, class definitions. And e the programmer can call methods on references that are unknown during runtime. In order to implement this efficiently, we found that every class has to, uh, every class definition has to have a smart memory structure for each of its attributes. Also, we, uh, as another feature, we have what we call external code blocks, which actually enables the programmer to make use of the non-determinist properties of the ZK snarks. So basically, let's say if we'd like to write a sorting code, we don't need any more to write merge sort code as in, and, as in the previous work. We actually can define the code this way. The, the programmer can say uh, that the, the sorted array is going to be a witness, and then we have an external code block that is going to be completely executed outside the circuit. Uh, in, in, in this case, for example, the, the programmer can call any Java library to, like, to sort and then figure out how the elements are going to be met. And then in the circuit itself, we're going to verify the permutation that the inputs and the outputs are similar, and we just verify the sorting condition. Okay? This is actually going to result into more efficient um, uh, circuits than before, and I have to say that this verify permutation is actually a high-level um, uh, opcode or an instruction in our program so that the programmer doesn't have to get into writing switches or setting witnesses and so on. Okay, so in terms of uh, evaluation, we evaluated into uh, like multiple contexts. So in, in comparison or uh, for cryptographic primitives, we compare with um, other compilers for SHA-256 and RSA and ES. For all of them, we show that um, our uh, circuits are, uh, are more concise uh, and in, more, in, in some cases as well that uh, it does not require uh, high programming effort. And for, for, for this table, for the SHA-256 and the RSA, our implementation actually match uh, the manual implementation. For this version, though, the EES does not, but for uh, our most recent version of the code that we posted, we matched the manual implementation for EES as well. 
And to give you also a sense of why these things are useful, uh, so uh, here we compare what's, what would be the proof time and the proving key size and the memory usage when we apply our optimization. So for example, for the EES, when we apply it for 300 block circuit, we, we see here optimizations in all of the different aspects, including the proof time, the proving key size, and the memory usage. Also for the random memory access applications, we show here, okay, so we have two options, either to write uh, just for fairness of comparison, to write merge sort code on our uh, exchange arc, and in this case, we also perform better than previous work. This is due to the adaptive memory techniques that we have and other low-level optimizations. And if the programmer chooses to use the permutation verifier to, to get better numbers, or like to, uh, to write the sorting as, as in the example that I showed, uh, it actually um, uh, gets orders of magnitude better. Additionally, we've chosen one of the applications that were developed uh, manually, and we uh, wrote it using our application, or our uh, exchange snark. And here we show that our framework was able to uh, get to the manual implementation of, um, of the zero cache. I'm not going to say it beats the manual implementation because it's, it's, uh, it's always possible to modify any manual implementation to be better, but at least we can now take manual, uh, like uh, automated tools to reach um, manual, um, uh, manually developed tools uh, for some applications. Okay, so in terms of the limitations and the future work, we plan we, uh, to integrate other optimizations. Till this point, we are also considering other applications and including more uh, optimizations. We plan to integrate with other front ends. We would like to customize the optimizations for other ZK snark constructions. We've seen in this conference multiple other back ends, so we would like as well to make our uh, optimizations um, uh, compatible. And we would like also to do automated testing for missing or incorrect constraints because it's easy or it's relatively easy to check the correctness of, this, of the circuit, but how can we make sure that any of the constraints uh, have not been, uh, or like we need to make sure that all the constraints have been written correctly. So we have made a partial release of XJSNARC on GitHub and more improvements and refinements are going to be posted. And we posted the manually developed uh, optimized circuits or gadgets as well in the, our uh, manually developed um, library. With that, I'm going to conclude my talk. Uh, thank you, and please let me know if you have questions. Hi. Uh, Hi. Thank you for your talk. Thanks. Also, thank you for referring to our work as QAP-based, QAP not linear PCP-based. Uh, so my question is, uh, uh, there have been all kinds of gadgets that optimize the uh, representation of different sub-circuits as uh, quadratic arithmetic programs. Is it easy to integrate in your framework new potential gadgets that people might be coming up with? Um, okay, so let's say if I, like if my uh, exhibition art does not um, uh, implement a certain gadget in, in, in the most efficient way, uh, like we provide, uh, like um, the programmer can actually develop or like do the manual development in, in, in the framework itself. So we basically provide the programmer to be able to define these external witnesses, which actually looks like the manually developed or like manual development exactly. So uh, the programmer would still be able to integrate these gadgets. Or, or you're asking about, okay, so if the question is about if there is a hard-coded gadget that we would like to integrate directly in our framework, uh, we currently don't support this, but it's possible in the future that, that we can do it. Thanks. Let's thank Ahmed again. Okay, thank you.